Today, I'm going to be going over some options to easily add audio effects to some of your projects, whether it's triggering audio using motion sensors, you haven't seen my body, have you? Adding sounds to 3D prints, or adding sounds to props or toys. While this is definitely not all the options out there, I'm going to be showing four useful products ranging from easy to complicated to add audio effects to your projects. And just as a disclaimer, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies and nobody's sponsored me to review these. They're just products I've used in the past and have found good success with that I wanted to share with you. We're gonna start with the easiest to use, which is the XLW Sound Module. This is a pretty nifty little device. It comes already assembled and put together, ready to use. You just have to turn it on and push buttons. And another great feature is that it actually comes with two of them when you purchase them. So it's a great bang for your buck. Another great thing about this module is that you don't have to purchase anything extra with it unless you really want to, say a improved speaker, but it already comes with the cable that you need to plug into the computer, which is different than some of the other boards that will need a data cable, which I'll go over in the next little bit. So we're just going to jump right in to how you can actually upload audio to this module. You'll just plug in the USB-C to the module itself and then plug it into the computer, but don't forget to power on the module itself or the computer won't be able to read it. Once your computer finds the device, it'll read it as a USB device. So go ahead and click into the USB device and it'll open the folder that houses the audio and everything else that you want to trigger with the buttons. Next, go ahead and find the audio that you want to add to the module for the button to trigger and then you drag and drop it into that folder. Once that's done, you just eject the device from your computer and then it should be ready to go for triggering audio. If you couldn't tell from the start of the video, one of the things I'm using this module for is to add fart effects to a potential fart gun. So that's what's gonna trigger when I push the button here. All right, so definitely to recap with this module, there are some pros and cons. The big pros is that it is relatively inexpensive and it's pretty darn simple. It's really nice, there's no soldering. It, comes ready to work, but it does have some downsides. It's hard to really add anything to it as far as upgrades, so you're limited there. The speaker that it comes with is kind of meh. There are some things that it does that I'm not really going to go over here, such as recording your own audio directly onto the module. But overall, it's a cool and easy option to add audio effects to your projects. All right, moving on to our next option, we have the Cosvox Cosplay Light and Sound Module and Bundle. This module is actually really cool because not only is it really easy to use, like the XLV that I just went over, but it also comes with some extra accessories, such as LED lights that can be triggered with buttons, along with a speaker that triggers audio based on buttons as well. And similar to the previous XLV, it comes with its own cable to hook up to the computer so no extra purchases there so when you hook it up to your computer you'll see that similar to the XLV it's recognized as a USB device but something you'll notice that's different about this device compared to the last one is that it has a folder for each of the buttons to trigger audio so for this one you'll need to upload an audio file for each folder that triggers an audio for its corresponding button and don't forget to delete the old audio that was left on there from when you purchased it. After that's done, you just eject it from your computer and it should be ready to trigger audio. So again, like I mentioned before, this thing is really great because it already comes built in with LEDs that you can turn on with buttons. So you can add LEDs and trigger audio all in one. Another thing that I love about this module is that it comes with an auxiliary input or a headphone jack, whatever you want to call it. But this makes it so that if you have an amplified speaker lying around, you can use that for your project to have even louder sounds. You haven't seen my body, have you? And this also allows you to trigger audio wirelessly from a distance by pairing it up with a Bluetooth transmitter and Bluetooth speaker. All you have to do for that is get a Bluetooth transmitter and make sure it's on the transmitting mode and power it on and then plug it into your device and then you'll want a Bluetooth speaker to pair it up to. Once you turn it on, they can pair with each other and then once you trigger an audio on the device, it will wirelessly transmit to your Bluetooth speaker. You have 
haven't seen my body, have you? I mean, this just opens up a lot of great options. So just to recap with this module, there's some definite pros and cons to this one. The great things about it is that it comes with everything. It's really very simple. There's no soldering. You can add some great accessories. You can pair it with Bluetooth speakers and other things like that. And you can also have a lot of customization with it as far as changing which audio triggers with which button and that sort of thing. But there are some cons with this board. It was by far the most expensive out of the bunch that I got today. And the speaker is kind of meh quality. And the last thing is that you can't really get very complicated with it. It's really pretty basic. You can only do the audio triggers and such. You can't really get into complicated projects like some of the boards I go over in this video. All right, next up we have the DIY Mall Infrared Motion Sensor Audio Trigger Module. I was actually really excited to find a module like this because it was the only module I could find online that came pre-built and triggers audio based on motion sensor. This just opens up a lot of great opportunities for pranks or some awesome Halloween props. One initial downside that I had when I first bought this thing was the cable that it came with did not allow my computer to read it. So I had to go and purchase a separate data cable. Maybe it was just my cable that was faulty, but that was already an extra expense compared to the other boards. So to hook it up to the computer, like I mentioned, I had to get a data cable. It's different than a regular micro USB cable. But once I plugged it in, the computer read it just fine. Just like the other two boards, it reads as a USB device on your computer and also just like the other boards you find the audio you'd like triggered on the module and you drag and drop it into the folder and then you just eject it from your computer and it's ready to trigger the audio. One thing that I learned after purchasing this module that I hope will save people a lot of time and headache is that the instructions they have on their website for plugging in the infrared motion sensor is actually backward. You have to flip the connection so it's opposite what the instructions say and then it will stop the audio from just looping over and over again and it will actually trigger based on motion. Now that we are ready to go, I'm going to put the module into this prop skeleton that I 3D printed and I want it to trigger audio when people walk by. Once you turn on the battery pack, it is ready to trigger audio so put everything together and then once it's motion activated, it will trigger the audio. Another great feature it has is it has a resistor on the back that you can rotate to adjust the sensitivity of the motion tracking, which is actually very helpful. This will be a perfect little device to scare unsuspecting trick-or-treaters. Like the others, there's some pros and cons to this audio board. The pros are that it has a unique audio trigger being motion activated compared to the others, which is great. Another great thing is it's very simple. It comes with everything you need. There's no real soldering or work and it would be great for pranks. There are some cons to this as well. Kind of like the others, it's pretty basic. You kind of get what you get. The speaker is also not very great and there's no real customization options to it. You can change the audio that's triggered based on the motion sensing and there are some things on the device such as volume control and play and next and that sort of thing but some other cons would be that the instructions are somewhat confusing and there was that mishap with the infrared sensor having to be plugged in the opposite way the instructions tell you to so those are some potential cons as well all right the last board we have is the adafruit audio effects soundboard it is arguably the most complicated board out of the the bunch that I'm going over today but because of the complexity you also get a lot of the customization and complex projects that you can make with it that you can't get with the other boards. You will also need a micro USB data cable for this board as well. Connecting it to your computer is the same as all the other boards. You plug the data cable into the unit and then you plug that into the computer and it will read as a USB device and like the other audio boards you find the audio you would like like and then drag and drop it into the folder. I'm not going to go too much into the details for this, but in a nutshell, you can change the way the audio is triggered based on how you name the file, the audio files in the folder itself. So if you wanted the board to just do a basic audio trigger, you would just give it a name and that's it. But if you wanted it to do a holding loop effect, you would give the audio file a name and then type in H O L D L and then that would give it a holding loop effect. But anyway, once you 
you've drag and dropped your audio files and named them appropriately, all you have to do is eject the board and then you can trigger audio just like the other boards. The other complexity you're gonna find with this board is you're gonna need some extra purchases like a breadboard and jumper cables or wires. And by using the breadboard, you won't have to solder anything necessarily, but soldering will end up with the best results. I know it's a bit complex compared to the others, but again, one of the benefits it has is it has an auxiliary or audio jack so that you can have amplified speakers connected to it, or you can wirelessly trigger audio by connecting it to a Bluetooth speaker. And the area where this board really shines compared to the others that I've gone over in this video is the complexity and the amount of projects that this board opens up to you. So for an example, I'm working on a project where I'm hooking up this audio effects board to an Arduino Uno. And and it will trigger specific audio files based on specific RFIDs. So again, that opens up some really cool options. All right, and to recap on this board, the pros is that it is very customizable. You can get really advanced with the projects and complexity that you wanna do with it. It's great quality, and I always love any of the products from Adafruit. They've always been a great company and have great customer service. But there are some cons, and those would be that it can be pretty darn complex. I mean, you, you almost need to solder it to really have good results with it. You can get away with wires and a breadboard but soldering is really something you'd need to know to get the best results but I will say there's a lot of tutorials on the Adafruit website so that can definitely help. Well there's an overview for all of the boards that I've used to add audio effects to a lot of my projects such as 3D prints or props. I know there are probably a lot of other options out there so if there's an option that I missed that you think would have been really great to add to this video let me know in the comments and I know I had to move pretty quick through the instructions on how to use a lot of these boards. So if there's something you'd like me to go into more detail with or a specific project, please let me know in the comments too. And also please let me know what kind of projects you'd want to build with some of these audio boards. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.